Welcome to the stimulus, and also, thanks for your cooperation. Hey guys, and welcome back to This Week in STEM. I'm Steph Ebbs, and the first story of the week deals with ants. Yes, those teeny tiny little pests that ruin picnics that Archer is always concerned about. Researchers were interested to see how ants would respond to microgravity, and spoiler alert, they really weren't that crazy about it. The experiment consisted of eight colonies of approximately 80 ants that were housed in plastic containers on board the ISS. According to Deborah Gordon, the senior author of the study, the idea is to ask the ants to search a small space, and then provide more space and see what will happen when the same number of ants have to use a larger space. Now, Professor Gordon was actually pretty interested in how the ants worked to regain their footing after they fell off the walls and were flirting through space. Sometimes they would grab onto another ant and climb back down, and sometimes they somehow managed to just flatten themselves back onto the surface. I think the biomechanics of that are interesting. Not sure the ants would agree with that word. They would probably use, you know, Terrifying if ants could talk, which they can't. The hope was that they could develop search algorithms for groups of robots. So when you send out a group of robots to search for whatever it is that robots search for, you would need a central control center, which would mean that the robots would be able to search autonomously. I don't know about you, but this entire experiment sounds like a really terrible sequel to Bugs Life, which we'll probably be getting before Incredibles 2. Where's my Incredibles 2 sequel? morning, SpaceX had a successful test of its Crew Dragon capsule's launch abort system. In the event of a catastrophic failure during a launch that might endanger the lives of the astronauts, this is the system that will literally rocket them to safety. One big benefit to SpaceX's concept is that it doesn't have to be jettisoned until after the vehicle reaches orbit. This gives a larger amount of time for the astronauts to be able to escape in the event of a failure. SpaceX's eight Super Draco engines embedded in the walls of the capsule allow for the astronauts to abort all the way up until orbit, extending the amount of time that they have to abort in the event of a failure. If the system isn't used, which is ideal, the engines can be used for a hard landing so that the system can be reused on later launches. Now, if you've been paying attention to SpaceX at all in the news, you know that reusability is a big deal for them, and rightly so. By utilizing reusable components during launches, you can greatly decrease the cost of spaceflight. Each one of the 3D printed engines provides around 15,000 pounds of thrust. So, 8 times 15,000, carry the 1, you get roughly 120,000 pounds of combined thrust from all 8 engines. This test was actually the first time that all 8 engines had fired in unison to launch the 8-ton Dragon capsule. The engines fired for about 6 seconds, and this was enough to launch the capsule 1.4 miles, or about 2.2 kilometers, off the coast and into the Atlantic Ocean. According to Elon Musk, who held a press conference after the test, the vehicle accelerated from 0 to 100 miles per hour in 1.2 seconds. Or, as Drake would say, Oh, zero to one Dragon. Real quick. Musk's choice of adjective, however, was the term zippy, which I really, really hope they add to the data sheet. What is the acceleration rate of the launch abort system? Zippy. Zippy ranks right up there with thingamabob for me and my technical jargon. Now, could somebody please start developing a work drive for me? Everybody got a little bit of space flight. Yesterday afternoon, astronaut Scott Kelly and cosmonauts Gennady Padalka and Mikhail Kornienko left Earth bound for the ISS and for the history books. Kelly and Kornienko are about to spend a year on the International Space Station. Now, a typical mission lasts about six months. Now, by doubling the mission duration, researchers will be able to analyze the long-term effects zero gravity has on the human body. Now, while this information is critical for future deep space missions, it also has some medical applications here on Earth. This information could be useful in developing recovery plans for patients that have been bedridden for long periods of time. Additionally, the information could be helpful in monitoring people that have immune system deficiencies and can't react well to diseases. A long duration spent in zero gravity can have numerous impacts on the human body. For example, it can impact eye shape, affect bone density, and lead to muscular atrophy. Over the next year, researchers will study everything from Scott's sleeping patterns and exercise routines to his immune system response and the effects of stress. Now. As with all good experiments, it's important to have a control or baseline to compare your experiment measurements to. Enter Mark Kelly, Scott Kelly's identical twin brother who also happens to be a retired astronaut. While Scott is in space, Mark will be subjected to comparative genetic studies. They'll take blood samples, analyze him psychologically, and do physical tests. Tons of records are being broken on this mission. After Scott Kelly completes his mission, he will break the record for the most cumulative days in space of any American. 
adding the 342 days that he's about to spend in space onto all the rest of his career, you get a whopping 522 days, which absolutely shatters the previous record. In addition, Kelly and Kornienko will set the record for the longest single mission on board the International Space Station. Now don't think that Padalka isn't getting on this action. While he is only spending six months on the space station this time around, if you add that up to the rest of his incredibly impressive career, you get the record for the most cumulative days of any human ever spent in space. And that is amazing. So gentlemen, we look forward to seeing you back here on Earth in 2016. Best of luck. So that's it for this week in STEM, guys. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a big ol' honk and thumbs up. And if you think the stuff that I was talking about was pretty interesting, I do it pretty regularly, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget, if you guys find any really cool STEM news stories throughout the week, feel free to tweet them at me at atstepfs43 on Twitter using the hashtag twistem, and I might cover it in next week's video. Also, I'm trying to come up with different topics to cover on my Topic Talk segment, which sometimes airs on Wednesdays. So if you guys have a STEM topic that you've been dying to know more about, go ahead and tweet that at me as well and use the hashtag Topic Talk. And that's it, guys. Go forth and have a wonderful and safe weekend, and I will see you on Wednesday.